The EFF is welcoming the president's acceptance of Ntlantlanene's resignation. The party was fiercely critical of his ability to hold office. Apart from meeting the Guptas, the party says there are more skeletons in Ntlantlanene's cupboard. To discuss this and the appointment of Tito Mboweni as the new finance minister, we joined by the EFF's deputy president, Floyd Shiwambo. Good evening, sir. Thanks very much um, for your time. Well, from what uh, President Ramaphosa said earlier, uh, it's a measure of Ntlantlanene's conviction and commitment that he chose to resign. Well, we, uh, as we said in the public statement as the EFF, we welcome that ultimate Tlantlanen stopped playing hide and seek and fell on his sword because we demanded that he should do so. Uh, we were emboldened and inspired as the EFF that we are a very impactful uh, and effective opposition party which takes up battles that we know that these are real battles that uh, we must pursue and we, we hold the executive accountable and when people have gone beyond their line of duty to do wrong things, they should be removed from the executive. Uh, that is why we are emboldened and we are quite satisfied that ultimately he fell on his sword. And of course, Ntlantlanene had a lot of things which were wrong about him in terms of how he got to interact with the Gupta criminal syndicate. And many South Africans didn't understand the context within which we raised uh, Give us in context, terms of uh, The context is that we have got a Gupta criminal syndicate which in 2013 lands illegally at the waterproof uh, air, air base and are involved in Henrina uh, in terms of the dairy corruption which happened there. And at that time, National Treasury is tasked with investigating the corruption around the Gupta money movements in terms of what happens. And then it comes to our attention that in Tantanene during that period, spends a lot of time in Saxon world with A.J. Gupta and all the people who are involved in corruption. This side is national treasury and this side he is whining and dining with people who otherwise are supposed to be held accountable. That is why just that information that he was spending a lot of time in Saxon world and in the Sahara offices and everything else was adequate that he is not suitable and credible well, from what he told, to um, a, a minister of uh, of finance uh, in in the current conjecture, because there's a lot of integrity issues that have to be dealt with perfectly in South Africa currently. Because if you have got a struggling economy, a jobs bloodbath, like hundreds of thousands of jobs are are being lost just in 2018, and you want to inspire confidence on 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 those who own the money currently to invest to create jobs to reboot the economy and then you still have a questionable Minister of Finance, that we say to the President is not a proper environment to could then deal with issues that have to be dealt with in the immediate. That is why Tantanen had to go and he is gone because of the EFF. Uh, well, the ANC and the South African Communist Party reacting before you uh, arrived were saying <clears throat> that simply isn't true. Um, <laughs> it's the president's firm hand that is responsible for Tlantlanena's departure. As, as a matter of fact, the president heard from the EFF for the first time that Tlantlanena was involved in shenanigans with the Guptas. When he appointed him, he was not aware that Ntlantlanene had got a dark history of association with the Gupta criminal syndicate. The commander-in-chief of the EFF and president actually brought that to his attention when we were doing the president's budget vote in parliament to say that this minister, which you think is squeaky clean, is actually very dangerous, is involved with the wrong people, and we have actually written him a letter, and we expect him to answer honorably. And the president, who apparently is having a firmer hand, was shocked there in parliament that there is wrongdoing amongst his own people whom he had trusted to be the, the, the front soldiers in terms of recovering what was lost under Jacob Zuma and everything else there. He, he heard from us. So whoever says what, uh, the fact of the matter is that it is the EFF which has saved South Africa from uh, undercover criminals, uh, undercover corrupt individuals who, who, who during the night they, they are working with the Guptas and during the day they act like uh, squeaky clean individuals who are fighting against corruption, whilst in the other hand they are helping the capturers to undermine the integrity 
and, 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 and honesty of the South African state apparatus in its entirety. So that is one of the issues that so, obviously so, must be given to us. So, South Africa must give it to us because we are the ones who brought this to the fore. Even the president heard from us. So the uh, PIC's one billion rand loan uh, to his son is neither here nor there or is secondary. For you, the main issue is the fact that um, he was busy flirting with the Guptas while Treasury um, uh, was um, that is busy you know, with an the, investigation. The first, the first scene is his continued association with the Guptas. And of course, in his engagement with the Guptas, he did call some of the deal makers who wanted to get money from the PIC and, and told them to work with the Guptas uh, for certain deals to be approved by the PIC, which was the chairperson of at, at that particular time. And the context of what happened with Siabonga Nene and the Indian citizen who went to the PIC to ask for money is that they wanted to invest in a business in Mozambique. And then the PIC said that we do not do BEE financing for projects that are outside South Africa. Uh, but because you have referred this lucrative deal to us, we're going to give you some initiation or introduction fee uh, as a thank you to uh, what you have introduced to us. And then the, the PIC administration, we know we've seen the documents, we've got the files, said that, but why is Siabonga Nene part of this company and his father is the chairperson? He must be removed out of it uh, in terms of what had happened. But from what one, you... thing that we are, one thing which we are dealing with now, Vuyo, is that we want to know who is this uh, partner of Siabonga Nene. His citizenship is Indian. The Guptas are Indian. Who introduced the deal from the beginning and partnered with Siabonga Nene to go and take the initiation fees and was even asking for money from the PIC with the son of the, the ex-minister of finance, Siabonganen. It's one of the issues that, of course, we're going to then dig deeper into. And if there was material wrongdoing in terms of the law, that money that was given to that consortium or that grouping that went to invest in a business in Mozambique must come back to the PIC because it was not properly handled. And also there was a conflictual relationship. Even though Seabonganene resigned a few days before the money was sent, there has to be something that is done to recover the money that was given and duly to the son of Ntlantlanene. Uh, uh, well, of course, there's a difference between uh, uh, asking questions or saying Ntlantlanene should have known and having evidence that uh, he was actually involved or he aided and abetted the wrongdoing. Which one is it? We, we, uh, we have the evidence and we always had the evidence and the catchiest thing that we did was to write him a letter and not even a public letter. We, uh, we, we have got no obligation, by the way, as a public political organization to write private letters. But we wrote him a letter and gave him the courtesy to say you're a minister of finance, you're occupying a sensitive position. If there's lots of doubts around you, the, the, it might even affect this uh, money trading that happens sometimes illegally in terms of uh, what happens with the currency and everything else there. Please respond to these questions honorably and in an honest way. And what did he do? He became dismissive, he became arrogant, he became defensive, and, 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 and spoke less of the EFF as if uh, he could just brush us off as if we do not exist as a political organization. He did not know that we had just finished with Jacob Zuma. We had just said that Jacob Zuma stepped down and he, he jumped and fell on his sword. And, and, and we cautioned him that if you take the same attitude, you will follow the same direction as Jacob Zuma. Talking today, he is no longer a minister of finance, and I'm sure he's going to even lose those temporary board positions which he had when he was first fired because those that had accommodated him in the companies thought that he's an honorable human being. Uh, he's a, it's a person that can be trusted with fiduciary responsibilities even in strategic companies here in South Africa. So now his integrity is gone. No one is going to trust him with anything because he became very arrogant with the economic freedom fighters. But from the information you have, did he get involved in trying to secure deals for his son from the PIC? He did, involve, he did get involved in trying to secure deals 
for his son in the PIC, and he did get involved in trying to force some consortium to partner with the Guptas to get money from the PIC. He did say to a consortium to say that for you to get approval from the PIC for purchase of a certain business, you should partner with these Gupta criminals. He did do that. And you can deny that, you can try to litigate against us, it will come out in the open that he did try to do that. And in certain instances, he did not succeed in trying to force and strong arm people to work with the Guptas, but he did do it. So where are you taking this information to? Because there's a state capture inquiry that is hungry for this kind of information. Do you know, the, uh, many people are constantly saying, I saw in social media, people are saying that, yeah, why is the EFF not going to the Commission of Inquiry? Why is the EFF not coming to submit to the Commission of Inquiry? There is a process in the Commission of Inquiry that is uh, uh, taking place now. There are witnesses that have been identified who are going to appear there. We, we make our own observations, like, like interested parties. And when we deem it appropriate at the ultimate end, when all these witnesses have appeared, we will go when we have decided to say that the, the submission by Tlantlanene, the submission by Molusu Gigaba, the submission by Dudizane Zuma, the submission by Faith Mutambi, by whoever had some uh, direct or indirect relationship with the Guptas is incorrect and here's the evidence that the commission should consider in conclusion and finalizing its own report. We can't every time there is a, there's a, there's a witness in the Commission of Inquiry, then the EFF must go and line up there to respond to each and everyone else. Let us allow the Commission to do its work, and then when we, we, we then deem it necessary to then make a submission, we will make that particular submission. Uh, because you must remember that whoever can say what, we are the ones as the EFF who brought to the attention of South Africa that there is a criminal family based in Saxon world that is working on mechanizations to undermine the, the integrity and the autonomy of the state. They appoint boards, they appoint ministers, they are, they are involved in deciding where the major contracts and tenders should go to. They intimidate people with jobs and, and so on and so forth. We are the ones who brought to the fore that the Guptas are a problem in South Africa. And we, we came with detailed framework, even by the way, in the, in the public protector's report, we went to make submissions, most of which uh, uh, obtained ultimately when the report was issued. So even in this process, the people of South Africa must be patient with us. We never go wrong when we expose corruption. We always get it right, and we're going to make sure that each and every lie that is told in the state capture inquiry is exposed, and each and every individual who misleads the inquiry is held accountable, is charged for perjury because everyone else does this, so help me God. Okay, uh, you need to go, and yes. uh, we, I also need to do something else. But two quick questions I need you to answer. You know that the rumor mill has been on overdrive okay. um, since uh, this whole episode um, um, started. Inferences were made about one, where you got your information, even suggestions that you got it. Some people were saying from the Ruperts. I need to, you to answer that directly. Did you get that information from? No, we didn't get information from the Ruperts. I thought they were going to say you got it from the Guptas because uh, some, are, some are saying from the Guptas, some are saying from the Ruperts, some are saying from Zuma and everything else. There. Well, we Zuma is not going to be my next. No, we did not, we did not get uh, uh, information from any of those uh, people. Zuma would never but, in any way give us any information. Okay, let's say he no, didn't give, he would give us any information. By the way, okay, the, the Stellenbosch Mafia is hurt with the, the fall of Nene because they were using the lame that uh, position that Ntanta Nene was in to run national treasury through Pravin Godan and Ismail Mumuniat. They knew about all this information throughout. But that syndicate of the Ruperts, of Trevor Manuel, of Pravin Godan, were running national treasury to the exclusion of the minister because they knew he's a lame duck, they knew that he has got a gun on his head, which was going to be pulled any day. Okay. So now maybe there might be some degree of autonomy with a new minister that will apply to national treasury. 
So, so, so the speculations of how we get the information from yeah, quick really doesn't matter. We just, we just quick one, quick. We look question. into it and then we then deal with it. Then. As a political, okay. as a political animal, you would know that what you have done does play into the hands of the agenda that is being or would be pursued by people like Jacob Zuma, for example. Does that bother you? Look, I don't, I don't know what agenda uh, that is. Uh, well, he, we're happy with what happened us. today. I don't think let's, 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 let's summarize to you what defines our approach to politics. It's pursuit of principle. We always pursue principle. We do not look for political conveniences. We do not look for like, things that are comfortable. We go for principle at all times. If a person is corrupt, is corrupt. If a person is being victimized, we will be the first ones to defend that person. That is why when we thought Ntantanene, when we thought Pravin Godan at that time is being victimized, we stood on their side, but when they do wrong things, we go very heavy on them and expose their shenanigans and wrongdoing because that is what we stand for, principle at all times. We are guided by principle as the EFF. Okay, that's why we're going to leave it for this evening. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. For